During 2014 to 2016, a range of heritage and arts projects have been taking place across Shropshire as part of the Pity of War. The projects, which mark 100 years since World War I, are funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund, Arts Council England, Shropshire Council and Activity Partners. So far, over 15,000 people have engaged in the programme. Activities include new commissions, war walks, trenches experience, talks, music, dance, drama, rural touring, digital media, arts festivals and contemporary visual arts. Over 60 young people worked with media active, historians, artists, journalists and archivists to uncover stories of the war. Using digital media, they created a body of work which is now being shared through social media. The number of young people who've been brought into the different projects, I mean, without this support, um, they would never have had that experience. And the fear and the smell of the guts and the blood, all the things he never even think to teach you about in training. He is going to do this. Crack! Crack. Each slow dusk has been touring rural village halls. It presents the soldier's perspective then and the woman's perspective now. I felt sad when I thought about them. All the years of my life surging through my body at once as those men rose in front of me, their faces looking out of the dirt. Together. This exhibition at the Shrewsbury Museum and Art Gallery by contemporary art group Recollect exposes the spin and propaganda around war. I particularly like this piece because um, it, it's, it's very moving, the, the positioning of something out of context to render it something beautiful when it's actually something horrific. I just find it very strong and very emotional. And We've actually built a trench network with a forward firing trench with firing steps, front listening post, um, we've built two communication trenches, a rear stroke reserve trench, two underground rooms and all of the bits and pieces that go with the trench system. I'm, I'm sure this is going to be a huge attraction for not only school kids locally, nationally and internationally but also adults as well because it's, it brings back those, those wartime memories which we've all heard about growing up and I think it's a great opportunity to to almost li live that a little bit and you know, discover what it was all about. I brought my teenage son and he was quite reluctant to come um, but uh, you know, he's actually really engaging with it and keeps saying can we go and have another look round. It's been a great coming together of um, a diverse number of groups so I think it's working really well. Since 2012, the consortium has grown and now includes over 50 organisations who are working together to plan and deliver further activity in 2017 and 2018. I've seen the group come together and be prepared to share everything. Nobody is keeping their own little bit of World War I to themselves. It's a dynamic digital journey through the um, creation of modern orthopedics and uh, insight into the life and heritage of uh, Sir Robert Jones and Dean Magnus Hunt. What we're hoping to do is document and represent a version of the past that engages with, with people on a contemporary level, so especially young people to get them interested in learning about, about this vital sort of heritage in this local area but also all across Britain I think. My part in Shropshire Remembers has been to design a series of war walks on the home front. We have, in the words of our walkers, brought these people back to life, uh, which I found very touching. Quite enjoying these sort of wartime Something a bit different, and, yeah. Mm. Yeah, 
celebrating I, your area. Yeah. It's nice to see it demonstrated in a way that makes it does make it interesting and inclusive. Work me over the field, cook in my heart smiling as he finishes work, scrub the house and not just... My Dearest Girls is about a book of letters discovered in Shropshire archives sent during 1917 to 1920 between a group of Shropshire women. The play reveals their everyday lives as farmers, office workers, factory hands, nurses and teachers. I think it um, probably would inspire people to actually think about people's lives and what's left of, of you know, their letters and, and the papers they leave and, and, and their memories. It's quite thought provoking, it makes you wonder what your own family went through. So let's leave them as they are, 22 years old. Girls on the edge of adulthood. What happens next? It's another story. Charles, Sidney, Henry, Bulkley, John Kerwin, Henry Thomas, Jeter, Harry, Charles, Edward Stokes, Carl Brenton, Charles Stockley French. There are 5,286 names on Shropshire's Roll of Honour for the Great War. To commemorate these people, the public were invited to visit the Shrewsbury Museum and Art Gallery to participate in the creation of a visual and audio record. The project was developed by Andy McEwen and Maggie Love, who spent four weeks as artists in residence at the museum. This uh, concert is the culmination of this vision that Bookfest had to bring together literature and music to give young people a way to remember and actually to find out about the First World War poets in a, in a different way than they might do normally. Well, it's been hugely exciting preparing for it because it's taken the best part of two years to prepare. I think it's a great collaboration. Altogether there are near 300 young people taking part from eight or nine different schools across Shropshire. It'll be quite a memorable and moving experience. The Pity of War has offered a unique opportunity to deliver a broad programme of arts and heritage projects across the county. The shared theme of World War I has inspired and moved Shropshire people of all ages. This has been the most rewarding volunteer project in which I have ever been involved. It has created a real buzz in Shropshire. <laughs>